Hey everybody, welcome to Grimsforge Gaming. Today we're going to cover my Magicka Sorcerer Storm Atronach. And let's just jump right into this. I know a lot of people right now have been having a hard time with Sorcerer. They feel like Sorcerer has um, not evolved the way the other classes are. Like uh, DKs are very strong right now, Warden feels great right now, and Sorcerer kind of feels like it's in the same spot. But for me, I've never run max stat before, and what I mean by max stat is like if you're running Crafty Alphique paired with Bright Throat's Boast, and you're running 40 or 50k max mag, and so you have these nice big shields, I've never done that. I've always just pushed spell, spell power, and uh, I tried to find a nice balance between spell power, uh, or spell damage, and um, pen, and so this transition period or this time frame where a lot of people are really kind of struggling with Sorcerer right now or they feel like Sorcerer doesn't pack the punch that it used to, I haven't really felt that at all. Um, and if you go look at a Battleground that I just posted not too long ago, I'll take my Sorcerer out, you can look at pretty much all my Battlegrounds on Storm Atronach or Doctor Strange and or Valkorion and you'll see that I've always tried to push spell damage on these guys. and. So anyways, here, we're, here we are with a build. This works in no CP, um, Imperial City, uh, Cyrodiil. You can run this in no CP. All the sets work in no CP. Or you can run it in Battlegrounds or CP scenarios. I'm having success on, on all the way around on this build. And so we'll have to explain some of the abilities that we're running and why I'm having success. This is very important. Don't just look at the armor sets and then go and put it together and then go struggle and then say, the build is crap. <laughs> you have to understand how to play this thing, okay? Yes, it's a sorcerer and maybe you're a sorcerer ma main, but you need to understand how to play with without max shield sizes. And so let's jump into this, all right? So first things first, I am running Wild Hunt, and all three of my jewelry are going to be infused with spell damage. The reason I run Wild Hunt, like let's read down here, it says increase your movement speed by 15% while in combat, increase your movement speed by 45% out of combat. So between this and my major expedition from my armor buff, I'm moving very quickly from A to B, from fight to fight, okay? And, this, and I always travel from A to B on my resto bar, and we'll explain that later. But getting from A to B, having major expedition and the additional movement speed from Wild Hunt out of combat as well as in combat, it's a lot of movement speed. Speed is one of the best damage mitigation tools in ESO if you know how to use it. And so anyways, Wild Hunt for me has been working great. Um, the first set that I have is going to be Twice Born Star. And a lot of people, here's the thing, both these armor sets on here, people are gonna scratch their head and say, what? You're having success with that? You don't need crazy proc sets to have success if you understand how to play the class. And Is There No One Else just released an amazing video that was talking about this. Learn how to play your class. Learn how to fight other classes and survive against other classes. And then look to add addition, free damage, free healing from proc sets after you've got good, right? Um, anyways, Twice Born Star, let's read this here. It's uh, first line is max health. Uh, or a second, the two-piece bonus, max health, three-piece bonus, max stam, four-piece bonus, max mag, and the five-piece, you can have two Munda Stones at, at one time. This armor set is craftable, and it gives you the ability or the flexibility to be exactly what you want it to be. Maybe you want one Munda Stone to be spell damage and the next one to be pen. Maybe you want it to be spell damage and mag, mag recovery. Maybe you need max health and armor. Twice Born Star gives you the flexibility to get two Munda Stones. And if you look, I'm running Divines. I'm, I'm running Divines on almost everything I have to capitalize on both those Munda Stones. Okay? So Twice Born Star. And the next set I'm running is Heartland Conqueror. Heartland Conqueror is also craftable. And if you look at this, I'm running Nernhoned here. 
okay? The two piece max spell damage, uh, added spell damage. Three piece is max mag, four piece max stam, and then the five piece increase the effectiveness of your weapon traits by 100%. So this normally, Nern Honed, would only be 15%, okay? Add 15% to your spell damage. Now it's 30%. Also, when you look at my back bar, look at my defensive, uh, my defending trait on that. 6,500, okay? That's crazy. On my back bar, when I buff up on this, almost 30K resistances, 27, 26K physical resistances. I'm very beefy on this. And like I said, I travel around on my resto bar. So when people engage me, they're probably going to, if they catch me sleeping, <laughs> they're going to catch me with that much resistances. Okay. And that's more resistances than some medium armor wears. Right. So let's be honest about that. Okay. So Heartland Conquer craftable, that's pretty nice you can make this whatever you want maybe you don't want it defending maybe you want it empowered or powered for additional healing right um maybe you don't want nern honed and you want to go sharpened and you're going to get like an extra 6500 penetration up here and so you'll run a little less spell damage but you'll probably hit the 14 15k pen on a sorcerer and so that's that's pretty nice um, and then I've got a one piece trainee here and you can see that's still in training I'm not going to spend the transmute um, to change that right now um, another thing too to adjust to this meta I used to run like all light armor um, but what I found is in those moments where they do jump on you because damage is very high right now um, they could almost global you they could nuke you in a millisecond and so i ended up changing to three heavy so we've got a heavy shoulder piece heavy helm and heavy chest and then everything else is light okay and you can see divines 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 and everything is prismatic enchants except for this one and i just left that as a max health enchant because i wanted to get close to the 30k and i believe we break the 30k as soon as i use my shield from my front bar here so, yeah, 31K. You can see that down there at the bottom. You can see our spell damage at 5,292, so 5,300 spell damage. And if I wanted to run a spell damage glyph on my back bar, um, we could probably hit 56, 50, we'll say 5,600. And with continuous and everything else, we break 6K, no problem. Um, and so that seems to be working really well. So that's the setup right now. One Piece Trainee, Wild Hunt, and then Heartland's Conqueror, two purple ones, right? If you wanted to gold these out, you could, and you'd get even more spell damage out of this thing. And I'm running Nern Honed on it. And so real quickly, we'll go through everything just so you can see, because some people might want to make this build exactly and take it for a spin. And it's super easy considering almost everything is craftable, okay? Um, drop the poisons on the back bar, put a weapon and spell damage in uh, glyph there if you want to push more damage okay all right let's look at the stats buffed up on this this is on my back bar where they engage us at 29,000 27,000 physical 2100 mag recovery with a potion popped and this is on our back bar um, 4700 spell damage and 8700 pen okay 30k mag, 30k health, and 17k stamina. I wouldn't go below 17k stamina. Most of the sorcerers that I train in PvP, they get killed because they're getting stam checked. Um, they don't have enough stamina to break free, uh, to dodge roll, or um, you know they're sprinting between A to B while they're while they're uh, traveling to fights and they're burning their stamina by the time they get to the fight they've only got 10k stamina they take a fossilized they can't break free they die okay very important um also the 1700 plus this is actually i've run much less mag recovery on my sorcerers before if you go back and look at um 
I did a three build video with sorcerers and it was like 1.21 gigawatts and uh, Valkorian and stuff like that. And I was probably running a, a thousand recovery on one of those builds, mag recovery. So I'm used to running very low recoveries. Um, but 1700 feels amazing. 2100 feels awesome. So you can see we got 64 points into Magicka and we are a high elf sorcerer. And when we scroll down here, you can see I'm running the lover for additional pen. And that's a little bit higher because we're running mostly divines, right? And you can see we're running the atro for more mag recovery. Now, if I wanted to be more aggressive, I'd switch the atro and lose almost 500 mag recovery. And I would put that into spell damage and I would gain almost 500 spell damage. And then we would be in the six to seven K spell damage range with buffs and whatnot, you know. Um, but this seems to be the sweet spot, right? I need enough mag recovery and speed to just outmaneuver people and nuke them. OK, we are running um, Witch Mother's Potent Brew. Gives us mag recovery, max mag, and a little bit of max health. There's probably some better foods for this. Um, if you wonder, if you weren't worried about the additional mag recovery from this, you could run um, Bewitch Sugar Skulls and go max stat. This would probably feel good too. Use the food and change the food based on your personal play style as well as the Munda Stones, right? The Munda Stones and the food should be built around your play style. All right. Let's look at the abilities. Let's talk about the back bar first. So first things first, I am running streak on my back bar. I do get a little grief about that. Streak goes on the front bar, but because I move around on my front bar or on my back bar, I want streak available to me on demand right there. And it's got almost 6K tooltip on it. And what I'll do is I'll prime targets, which means I'll put Honing Curse on them. I'll put Endless Fury on them. Then I'll streak through them, turn around, turn and burn. Everything goes off at once. They are incinerated. And that's awesome. We're running Crit Surge. I like Crit Surge. It's one of the most... Um, um, it, it's a nice heal. Okay, crit surge is a nice heal. If you look at that unbuffed, it's 3,300, almost 3,400 whenever you do critical damage every second. And we do a lot of critical damage on this build, even though our crit chance is low. It's because of the amount, how everything lines up on this. There's going to be a guaranteed crit in there somewhere every second. And so that's nice. We're running on Boundless Storm, and you can see that gives us major expedition, and it's our armor buff, and it does a dot damage uh, around you within five meters and so I like this a lot so on my back bar how I'm traversing A to B in battlegrounds and looking for fights Wild Hunt is active out of combat I got an extra 45% movement speed plus I have access to major expedition for an extra 30% movement speed we are very fast on this and that keeps me out of bad positions it keeps me off the x or out of the kill box okay so that's very important uh, boundless storm right there i've recently switched this out i used to run the light armor um the light armor shield on my back bar but because damage was so high i used to run harness magica on our back bar but because damage has been so high i needed an extra form of heals and so this ended up being great and also this could be used to help or save your teammates in a pinch you see a teammate that's running low you don't necessarily want to pop your uh, rest of ult to save them. You like them, but you don't really like them, right? You, just, <laughs> Hey, buddy, I'm going to give you a little help, and you throw this at them. No, I'm joking. Uh, if you need to throw your rest of ult, uh, don't do it. Save it for yourself. No, just kidding. Throw the resto alt out there. Be the hero. Anyways, Healing Ward uh, ended up kind of solving that for me. It gave me an ability to put a little shield on people that needed just a little extra help. And if they're in the process of kiting or line of sighting, as long as that shield's active, they're getting health coming in. And hopefully they're healing themselves as they go. And so that was really nice. Uh, I like that a lot. And so I'm running Dark Conversion. Uh, dark Conversion is pretty nice. Uh, obviously unbuffed. You can see that burst heal is pretty juicy. And then we get some Max Mag in the tank. And we get some uh, Magicka coming in over 20 seconds. And this is a stamina cost. Now the thing about it is because I'm traveling A to B on the battleground on my uh, resto bar where all my resistances are and all my speed is and all my heals are at. Um, if I'm burning... 
resources as I'm traveling A to B, I just replenish those resources by hitting dark convergence. So as I hit this, because you can see the cost on it is 2300 as I get this back up and going, it's 3500 If I have to streak or streak twice, I can turn around and hit this once or twice and just replenish everything I've spent. And so this kit for me has worked out great. Um, and we are running Life Giver. Life Giver is amazing. You can see unbuffed. That's 10K dam uh, health coming in every second over five seconds. Just that top part alone will save your butt. And if you look at it, it's 106 ultimate. Now, when you read the next part, the next paragraph, when you activate this ability, you automatically cast Regeneration, Blessing of Protection, and Steadfast Ward at no cost. These will update based on which morph of each ability you have. So let's look at that real quick. So not only do I have, this will probably be 10, 11 or 12K health coming in every second over the next five seconds. I'm gonna get rapid regen as well, which was which is unbuffed 12K coming in over five seconds. That's a lot of extra healing. I'm gonna get blessing of protection, which is gonna give me minor resolve down there at the bottom, increasing you and your allies' physical resistances by 3K. So my armor goes up and I get that burst heal, that 8,700 unbuffed burst heal, and it puts the healing ward on me. So if I am in trouble and need to cast Life Giver, because the way Sorcerer Shields work, it's first shield in, first shield out. And what I mean by that is if I cast this shield first, any incoming damage will take that shield down first. So what I do is I hit that shield and then I hit my Life Giver. And Life Giver is going to activate this shield on its own. And I'm going to start getting that heal. And this shield is protected, hopefully, by this smaller shield and my line of sighting, okay? And so what I found is Sorcerer Toolkit is still very strong. It feels fine. Like, aside from running into Mara's Bomb and all this silly stuff that, you know, we are in a tank meta, the Sorcerer Toolkit lines up really nice. Get rid of Crystal Weapon on your Sorcerer. I know everybody was trying to make that happen or did make that happen with the hybridization and stuff and go back to Crystal Frags. Run your traditional Sorcerer Kit and it feels great. All the damage lines up, okay? So what I find is because I can dispatch people pretty easily on my Sorcerer's offensive kit, I don't need my ultimate to take people out. And I end up sitting on a ultimate and I just end up using it to save myself or save a teammate and then we go right back to offense. Life Giver is amazing, okay? Let's look at our front bar unbuffed here. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm running Force Pulse. Force Pulse is the play right now. Don't run Crushing Shock. Crushing Shock's nice if you're trying to keep people off the reses. Like if you're killing someone and somebody just keeps trying to res them in a battleground or out in Cyrodiil, Crushing Shock's nice in that moment. But Force Pulse right now, because there's so many status effects bouncing around between Plague Break and everything else in the game right now, Force Pulse is the play. And if you see it, the damage up top, each one of those will break 3K, the flame, the frost, and the shock damage. But the bottom one there, up to two nearby enemies will take 10K magic damage if they were already afflicted with a status effect. And that status effect, uh, effect doesn't need to be um, given to them by me, right? If they just have Plague Break on them or they have whatever, whatever, you're gonna see this line shoot from your primary target to two separate targets and it's a lot of extra pressure into groups. So fighting outnumbered with this has actually worked out really well. Now unbuffed, you can see my crystal frags and we're gonna buff up, I'll show you tool tips on this, but this breaks 10K, probably 12K, gosh, I don't know, it's up there. Um, but you never wanna hard cast your crystal frag and I do see this a lot in training sorcerers that they don't necessarily have a force pulse they're just hard casting crystal frags and then whenever crystal frags procs then they get that bonus free cast and you can play that way it's just look at the cast time this is 0.8 seconds to get this damage off it's so much better to have a primary spammable especially this one and the extra damage from that second paragraph and just wait for this all four or five damage uh, out potential damages going out, proccing, um, proccing this. So 
and I guess it's not based on each individual thing because when you read it, it says your next non-ultimate ability cast within three seconds uh, costs ten percent less. Let's see, where is it down here at the bottom? Uh, while slotted, casting a health magic or a stamina ability has a thirty-three percent chance. So, just spamming this real quickly, like between a light attack, force pulse, light attack, force pulse, get your curse back on. Um, get your stuff up, you're going to get this procced often, okay? So only use this when it procs and it's going to be a metric ton of damage. We'll look at what the tooltip on it is and then we'll add 66% um, more damage on top of that. We'll get our we'll get our phone out and do the maths. Um, tooltip on this is pretty high and this is unbuffed. A Haunting Curse, it's going to explode twice and do AOE damage around the primary target. And so our splash damage and our burst damage on this is nice, okay? You can see uh, unbuffed, we're at 6200 with our Hardened Ward. Like I said, I don't run max spell or max uh, shields. I, I never have run max shields. So if you get used to playing your sorcerer right, right now and pushing max um, spell damage and make sure you have adequate pen, you'll see good results. And try running speed. Try running speed and keeping your and just basically kiting people's faces off and nuking them from a mile. Okay. And I'm running endless fury. This is a great form of sustain and. Um, uh, because of the way I play my sorcerer, I prime people. So there could be three or four people standing and fighting. I'm going to make sure one of them in the group has Haunting Curse on it. And then if any of them get low, I'm going to make sure that I get Endless Fury on them to try and get that mag reback, uh, mag sustain back in the tank. And also, um, you know, kill secure. I hate calling it kill steal, but uh, kill secure there, right? Okay, um, ultimate wise, I'm running uh, summon charged Atro. You can run this or you can run Overload. Overload's really nice in a single target burn, like if you're trying to burn somebody down. And summon charged Atronach isn't that bad either. This tooltip gets over 10K and it does the 10K on arrival and it stuns ev stuns everyone in the path or des you know the arrival point and it does the same amount of damage every two seconds so you create uh this gives you a little bit of zone control right if you're playing domination you're capturing the flag drop this on the flag another nice thing about summon charged atronach is if you are getting ranged down by people you can actually drop this and it is targetable so you can stand inside of it or stand behind it and use it a line of sight so you have a line of sight on demand so you've got zone control you've got burst damage on arrival you've got a stun on arrival and then you've got this zone control through this area of effect explosion that's going off uh, all the time also if you look at the bottom there's a synergy and granting nearby allies major berserk for eight seconds increasing their damage done by 10 percent that's pretty nice in a team fight if they hit that synergy there's here's a 10 percent damage boost for everybody uh go nuts okay so um, we had talked about priming, Haunting Curse, Endless Fury on the target, then I'll streak through them, then I'll turn around and Light Attack, Crushing Shock, hopefully this is procced by then and I'll let a frag go and then it's just boom, 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 and they're gone. They're back at base, they have no idea how they got there, and they're uh, reporting me for cheating, whatever. Um, Dark Magic. Um, another option that you can run here in team fights and things like that is absorption, absorption Field. And you can drop this on your team and it's going to do the negate, which uh, won't let anyone cast spells like magic abilities, but it'll also do a heal every second for the 12 seconds it's running. So in big team fights, while you're skirting around the outside, nuking into the team fight, you could drop a negate on your team. Um, and give them a little extra heals and maybe give them a, an opportunity to burst the um, enemy team down. So keep that as an additional option. It's really nice, okay? All right. Um, let's see. What else are we looking at here? Um, let's jump into our CP. Steed's Blessing for 20% extra movement speed. Rationer for more uh, duration on our foods and drink. War Mount, um, it's going to give you 
uh, endless stamina out in Cyrodiil. And I was just thinking, um, this seems to be bugged right now. So if you're on console, you're going to be running into this. But if you're using stamina or hitting the sprint button while you're mounted to try and ride faster, you'll notice that your stamina on your mount, obviously, because you have war mount, isn't going down. But the second you get to your destination and you dismount, you're character stamina is at zero and so this is bugged currently on uh, PCNA PCEU and I've already heard people talking about it on console now that they're noticing it um, gifted rider extra 10% movement speed everything else on here is just personal preference do whatever you want be awesome I'm running Untamed Aggression for 150 extra spell damage. I'm running Wrathful Strikes for 205 extra spell damage. I'm running Mastered Arms for an extra 6% um, to direct damage, which is almost all the damage that I do. I don't have any dot damage outside of my armor buff that has that damage over time effect to it. And then Deadly Aim, uh, single target attacks. We're, we're very heavy single target on this on this. Uh, build and character so now if you wanted to drop something drop deadly aim and run a cult overload and i think this is like 12 or thirteen thousand damage you kill somebody they explode in a four meter radius so this is basically like a cp vicious death right so if you're fighting outnumbered regularly a cult overloads probably the play over deadly aim okay everything else run whatever you want make sure you go into this one right here and pick up war mage there's an extra 100 spell damage right there and a flawless ritual and there's more pen there so make sure you get those more healing over here and more max stats and then if you jump in here there's some mitigations and some healing so make sure you get that stuff all right over here we're running Rejuvenation for 90 extra health, magic, and stamina recovery. We're running fortified for extra armor because we want to be a tanky boy. Um, damage is very high. We are running boundless vitality for extra 1400 max health. You need to be at 30,000 health or above. If you're running less than that, you can be globaled where damage is at right now. So, um, Anyways, and we're running Celerity for an extra 10% movement speed. Everything else is personal preference for the most part. You do you. Okay, let's jump into the last portion here. This is going to be a really easy one, but we're just going to talk about our styles and stuff like that. A lot of people are like, hey, what's that skin? Or hey, what's that armor? Or hey, how are you? <laughs> All right. Uh, you can see we got our helmet hidden and we're running Legion Zero shoulders. We are running Legion Zero gloves. We are running Legion Zero pants. We're running Legion Zero chest. We are running uh, Taseki girdle and we're running Legion Zero sabatins. Now this is what we look like as soon as my armor buff drops off here. This is what we look like without our uh, costume on. And we'll show you what costume we're running. Okay, this is my guy without the costume uh, and we're running the gloom bound staff and gloom bound is that it, you can see I don't have a weapon on me and as soon as you unsheath your weapon it just appears like a lightsaber okay pretty cool um, transluminal violet is the gold right there you get that by killing Molag ball in the middle of Imperial City sewers so go kill the three portals kill the three banners that show up then fight Molag ball and you will get this um, and then uh, Julianos white unlocked by the Ethereum archive completed achievement so those are the colors we're using this was available in the crown store um, and then armor sets let's jump into style here appearance have our hat gone you can see that the armor that we're using is the Emperor's regalia and uh, we have the helm or the crown uh, hidden and then the skin that we're using is the mind shriven skin and the personality is the commander okay all right um, anyways oh tool tips all the way to the end everybody's already left you stayed congratulations so tool tips here, you can see we're over 3K on all three lines, over 10K on that last paragraph. You can see we're at 11K on our crystal frag and it'll do 66% more than that. So it's like a 16K crystal frag. We've got 13K that's gonna explode twice. That's a lot. And we've got 10K here. 
uh, on arrival and then 10k every two seconds so our damage seems to line up really nice on this um, I have as long as I've had storm Atronach, I've never unlocked the mages guild meteor and you can see the tooltip on that is pretty darn big and it might be worth me unlocking meteor at some point that's 16k tooltip on meteor and then that and that's at unleveled so I could probably break I don't know 17 18 19 20k on a meteor um, so I might want to look into that and see because that's almost double the damage on arrival um, and what you'll do is summon the meteor on somebody then streak through them which will break their uh, block and they'll eat the meteor so what I'll do is make sure I put haunting curse on them endless fury on them summon the meteor on them and then streak through them and then turn and probably hit them with a light attack force pulse frag as the meteor lands and it's just absolute chaos so storm at your knock uh, this is strong and super simple two craftable sets and I've had a lot of success with this you don't need to get extravagant with your proc sets and everything else and look for something just buff your spell damage buff your pen and go kill people it's that simple all right you guys be safe out there bye